Hello and a very good evening to you. I hope you're keeping well on this Saturday and I hope you've had a great week. Well, you're up for another instalment of Urban Smash TV where I'm going to be interviewing another fantastic guest and tonight's guest will be the lovely Taj Miles. I'm going to introduce him in just a moment. But before that, if you're just watching this platform for the first time and you're wondering what we are about, where we're about interviewing established and rising stars, getting to know their story and their journey. And remember, if you missed out on any of our interviews from myself or from Stephen, then you can check us out on our YouTube page or on our Instagram page. But without further ado, I'm going to welcome BBC's Death in Paradise's Taj Miles. You may have known him for his character Marlon Price on Death in Paradise. He's also known for his musical theatre work in The Lion King. So let's get him on right now. Hopefully everything will connect and he'll actually take my requests. <laughs> Hello everybody. Hi Imogen. Oh, hello. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you, Taj? I'm not too bad at all. Not too bad. Loving the hat, I have to say. Loving the hat. Thank you. It's lot, lot down haircuts. So I've, I've got to do what I've got to do, man. <laughs> I can't look as beautiful as you. I'm sorry. I've got, I got to oh, keep it. Gosh. You know what I mean? Got... <laughs> you can't work with what you've been put, you know. No exactly. bars at the moment, so. It is what it is. It is what it is. Taj. Thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. Um, no absolutely amazing. Obviously, we're going to talk about your journey, Death and Paradise, all of that to come. Uh, first of all, actually, I just want to ask you, in this lockdown, what series are you watching? Is there a, a particular TV series you're watching on Netflix, Amazon, Ooh. anything on television? Um, there's a few. The, the main one I've been watching is Peaky Blinders because I, um, I stopped watching it for a while. I don't know why. So I, I think I was up to season three. So during this mm -hmm. lockdown, since I got back to London, um, and in a little bit when I was out filming Different Paradise as well, um, I caught up to the end of season five to get ready for the new one. But um, yeah, that, that took a lot of my time. Because sometimes, sometimes I'd watch episodes over again because they're just so good. Yeah. Um, other than that, um, anime series here and there, there's way too many to name because there's, 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 <laughs> there's loads of them. But uh, yeah, mainly Peaky Blinders. Are you a proper binge watcher? Or would you like watch one and then leave it to the next day? What would it, you usually do? It depends. If I'm really like into the show, um, I'm sometimes just forced to just binge watch it because I just need to know what happens, there. especially if there's episodes in bulk like Peaky Blinders. But um, mm -hmm. I prefer to watch them weekly. This is why I try and make sure I'm up to date with a lot of series when they come out because I'm up to date weekly. But if, if there's episodes available and I'm loving it, I have no choice but to binge watch. I have no choice. <laughs> so, Tash, talk me through your background. Where are you from? Where are your parents from? What's your heritage? Um, so my mum is Jamaican and Dominican from my nan and granddad. So my granddad's Jamaican, nan is Dominican. Um, I'm St. Lucian also from my dad's side. Um, grew up in East London, Hackney, uh, where there isn't really much to do, to be honest with you. And me as a kid, I was cheeky. I had energy. I had I had mouth for anyone. Um, you know, it was kind of a point of where am I going to end up if I'm not putting the energy into the right places? Mm -hmm. And it was either football or acting. And acting was the one that I kind of drew to. Football was good as well, but um, I wasn't the best as the other kids. And... So acting was kind of where my energy got put into, and yeah, I guess it's worked out so far. So far. It's worked oh, out. You, you can say that. I mean, obviously, <laughs> as a kid, you were in The Lion King, you yeah. also in Oliver. So you come from a musical theatre background. Talk me through your times uh, being in, in, especially Lion King, mm. huge musical, obviously playing yeah. young Simba. How was that experience for you? It's, I was talking to my friend about this recently, and at that age, I don't think I realised what I was doing at the time. To me, I was just having fun. I probably didn't know I was getting paid for it either. I probably did, but I didn't really, it didn't cross my mind. It wasn't important. I was just having fun. It was just like going to, um, I went to a drama school called Andrew and Teen. That's where I got um, my first bit of training when I was a kid. And it honestly just felt like doing that every week. But apart from you in front of like thousands of people <laughs> twice, twice a week, it was it's really, really fun. In, in those kind of shows, um, they understand that you're a kid and they make sure you enjoy yourself. Obviously, you're there to work. There's a lot of responsibilities, you know, learning your lines and whatnot. But when you're not on stage, you're, um, like Lion King, for example, there's eight kids in total, four symbols and four Nalas, because kids at that age can't do every single show every single day, so you have to alternate. But yeah. if one Simba's on stage, 
I'd be in the um, dressing room with another man in case something happens to him and I have to take over. So it would just be a lot of fun, really. Then performing as well was, as a kid, it wasn't really hard. It was just, you had just having a laugh, having singing and dancing. Um, it's a good, Iron King obviously was a massive, I was a massive fan of the movies when I was a kid. So mm. I, around those times, I was just having fun. It wasn't really, yeah. as an adult, you start to understand the politics and all the kind of like financial when it comes to being an actor. But as a kid, you're just having a laugh. You're just having a laugh, really. Uh, so obviously, I mean, there was a huge transition from that going into Death in Paradise. Um, and obviously, a huge show. It's been around for 10 years. Yeah. It, I mean, talk me through your audition process and what it was like actually booking the job. Mm. So um, I, I turned up audition. It was quite probably one of the quickest audition processes I've, I've done. It was only three auditions in total. So one with the uh, cast director, Sasha. Then two chemistry reads with Toby Bakari, um, mm. one of the two producers, the one of the director, um, and that was pretty much it. Probably over the course of, I want to say three and a half weeks, which is it can take double the amount of time, sometimes triple um, for some for some jobs. So I was really surprised to how quick the audition process went by. And mm. in terms of finding out the the role, usually when you find out you you booked a role, um, especially when in my circumstance it was it's the biggest role of my career so far. Um, mm. That will be what's on your mind when you book it. But while we was in lockdown, my first thought was, okay, great, I can leave London eventually. eventually I'm not going to be stuck at home for the rest of the year. My year was saved, pretty much. And then I think when I got there, um, I kind of started to be, okay, this is this, it's a big deal for me. I kind of need to focus. But at the time of booking the park, I was just happy that I was going to be out of London. <laughs> I'm not going to yeah. lie. I was just glad to be leaving. Yeah, I was happy I was going to get a bit of a holiday, even though it's work technically, but... In the Caribbean, I was like, okay, yeah, it's a holiday. I'm not going to be stuck in London for the rest of the year. How did you feel going to Guadeloupe and kind of joining such an established staff? Because you had cast there that were there, for, like Josephine, Ralph, Toby. They've been there for years. Yeah. They're a family, a tight-knit family. How did that feel for you coming into such an establishment? Mm, it, it, I was nervous. I'm, I'm nervous about a lot of things I do. I'll, I'll admit that firsthand. Um, mainly because... I just didn't know, I didn't, I didn't know them. I think I knew Toby briefly because he taught me at my drama school. Um, okay. But other than that, I didn't know, I didn't know them. So it was kind of a thing of, um, you know, I don't really want to, imp I know how I can be. I know I can be quite loud and energetic, but I don't know, you know, maybe Josie wasn't a fan of those kind of people. So I didn't really want to come here as the new kid and just, <laughs> just mess up a, a well-oiled machine and kind of kill their vibe when they've been doing it for years. I kind of just wanted to make sure I just fit in, just fit, just fit in perfectly. But um, it was the complete opposite. They, they, they kind of made sure that I was fitting in. Like, it, I wasn't, I didn't feel myself making the effort to kind of fit into the team. It was, I felt yeah. like it was more them trying to make sure that I was fitting in. If they were going, um, we used to do these little workouts every now and again, um, about six or seven of us. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I did not want to do the workout at all. I'm very, <laughs> I'm very, very lazy. I, that's the last thing I wanted to do after day, days of work. But um, it was just a good, like, for me, it was a good time to bond with them, to do to do workouts and things like that. And they didn't have to do that. That's something that they've been doing um, for years now, and they, and they brought me into it. So, yeah, man, they were great. They were great. So, obviously, we found out on Thursday that JP, played by Toby Bukhari, was leaving. Mm. Uh, what was your reaction to that? Because, obviously, fans of the show were very, very sad to see Toby leave. Yeah. Well, how did you feel? Um, it, was, it was weird, because I didn't know maybe until halfway through um, the shoot of, of Series 10. But I had a feeling towards, towards the beginning. I think we were just messing about. Um, like, he was asking me, like, I was asking him, like, how long do you think you're going to stay here for? And he's like, oh, I don't know. What do you think? And I said, personally, I think this is your last one. I think I think done oh, this. Yeah. Just as a joke. But then I kind of had, like, a little inkling. Like, it was just ways, just how he, his energy, I was like, I feel like he's going to be leaving after this one. Just kind of how he was, um, like, for example, he would say to me, there's a volcano that is famous on the island to go and climb. And, he was asking me, Taj, we need to go and climb the volcano. But that meant I have to wake up at five in the morning to go on a two-hour drive. I said to him, oh, it's fine, I'll, I'll, I'll do it whenever. And he was like, no, no, we have to do it this year, we have to do it this year. I was like, why is he so bothered to do it this year? Can't you do it next year or something? So after that, I was like, I feel like he's, I feel like he's leaving. And I think mm -hmm. we did a scene, I can't remember what scene it was, but after that scene, everyone was talking about, um, like, our dynamic is great on set, um, Marlon and, and JP are great. Then after that, he was like, I feel like it's the right time to tell you that I'm not coming back for the, oh. for the next season. And I, I, it, was a, it was a surprise. It was very, very sad. I won't lie. It wasn't surprising though because I feel like I knew. But it was really sad. It was really, really sad. Mainly because um, I love Toby, man. He's, 
such yeah. a nice, such a nice guy. But also because um, the characters work so well on camera. So it, was, mm. it, was, it was outside for both reasons, on screen and off screen. It's going to be missed on. I know. I mean, I think a lot of people are going to be sad to see that friendship go. Yeah. Um, what does this mean for your character, Marlin, at the moment? Can, well, can we expect maybe your character take on a new officer under the wing? I mean, do you know what may happen to your character in season 11? Your guess is as good as mine. I, can, <laughs> I guess, honestly, I'm, I've... I've um, I haven't had any conversations. I probably um, will soon, maybe. I've got some ideas of what um, I would like to happen or what I think would work. But mm. um, no, that's a question for, for Tim Key. Big Zen. <laughs> but I'm sure I'll find out, hopefully, soon, what, whatever's happening. But no, your guess is as good as mine. Yeah. <laughs> so is there any funny stories? I mean, you've said a few li little stories from set, you know, you guys working out. Um, yeah. I don't know if you've clocked, obviously, Bakari. Toby's my brother-in-law. So, I mean, I know how this guy is. When I saw Bakari, I was like, there must be some sort of, I don't think that's a common name, so I thought there must right. be some sort of relation there, but I didn't want to say anything, but thank you, <laughs> thank you, I'm easy. So, I obviously, I know his character, do you know what I mean? He yeah, is a yeah, character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, any funny sets from himself or anyone in the world? <laughs> any funny stories? The, the, the funniest one um, was when we were filming a scene, I think, for episode six, where Marlon is in like a, an oversized wetsuit and he has to go scuba dive in the sea. And um, I think for that scene in general, I was just not like nervous about it, but it was my first time doing anything. I had a lot of firsts in Death and Paradise. There's a lot of firsts, but one of the first was I've never filmed anything in the sea before, getting out like deep into the sea. And I was like, I don't even know how this is going to work. And Toby was like, oh yeah, it's interesting because um, this, this sea is like notorious for, for jellyfish. Mm -hmm. I said, what do you mean? Jellyfish. She said, yeah, have you noticed that there's no one on the beach? Because it was COVID, that was the reason, but I didn't, my mind didn't go there. I said, so why are they making me go deep into jellyfish infested sea? He said, oh, it's all, sure, it'll be fine. They might touch you, but to make sure they don't stink because it'll, it'll be bad. I said, are you being serious? He said, yeah, 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 I'm being serious. He said, I went, I went to the first AD, they got like a, um, a first aid guy in, and I was like, I don't mind doing it, but just make sure I don't get stung or something. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at, and inside, I think they, the AD said, who told you? And I went to go and like, point at Toby, and as I turn around, I can see him laughing. I was like, <laughs> I said, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it, forget it. And I said, Toby, that was, I, I said, usually I'll be quite annoyed at it, but I said, you know what? That was hilarious. I have to give you that one. That's something that I would do. So yeah, at the time it wasn't funny, but as like the day went on, I was like, no, nah, that was hilarious. That was, that that was really- No, you good. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. I have to give him that one. I have to give him that one. So, uh, you know, I don't know if you remember, but years back, uh, you did an interview with New Magazine, and I believe you were only 12 years old at the point. Something like um, that, yeah. Yeah, it was a long time ago, yeah. and they asked you about girls. <laughs> and talking about, you know, you're in a musical, so some girls, they just, like, pretend friend you, and stuff like that. <laughs> you know what I'm going to Can I quote, sorry, mum, girls are a waste of time. Does that statement still stand today? <laughs> that, that interview is going to come back to, oh my gosh, 12 year old time as a character. Um, um, <laughs> are girls no. a waste of time, Todd? No, no, no. Girls are a waste of time. No, 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 no. That, that, was, that, was, very, that was a very childhood mindset. No, no, no. Girls, girls are not a waste of time. Girls, no, they're not. They're not. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about them. They're not a waste of time. I don't know what to say. I don't know. That, that interview's hilarious, man. Are they still, I mean, are girls still giving you headaches? Taj, obviously, now that you're on TV, I'm sure they're talking to you. I mean, hey, are listen. they giving you, bothering you? What's going on? They, they, they might be, not none, none that I know of, none that at the moment. But no, like, with me, in, in general, when it comes to girls, friends, everything, I have quite like a a close, tight-knit circle that I've had for um, probably four or five years now. And I do find it tough sometimes to, like, kind of step outside of my circle when it comes to meeting new people. Um, yeah. girl, girls as well. So, um, I don't know how to answer this, but I'm trying to, like, <laughs> swerve it, but it's not working. It's not... It's not, it's not <laughs> sign in my DMs, girls. Go, go ahead. Do, do we do... <laughs> <laughs> well, let's just say, to say, you know, girls are not a waste of time, and you've, you've nah, come yeah, out yeah. of that mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was totally your time. 19 year old time is very mature, okay? He, he, he goes mind speed on time. <laughs> so is there anything else in the pipeline for you? Are you working on anything that you can tell us about um, besides from Death in Paradise? Uh, at the moment, no. No, no, just, just um, 
auditioning self tapes um you know seeing what else is out there uh yeah tons of professionally I, I do my own things on the side um here and there on on my youtube channel like my podcast yeah. um I'm, I'm trying to film like short films and stuff like that but with lockdown it's, it's a bit difficult if i do it it has to be um a crew of two being me and whoever i'm shooting but a lot of the ideas i have it's like gonna need a crew of like 30 so there isn't really much i could do at the moment so yeah my, my podcast probably was um keep me busy until um whatever i start shooting next happens so what is your future aspirations is there anything in, in particular maybe movie wise theater wise that you that you want to hit as your as your goals in in the future yeah um i think as as an actor it, it's, it's tough mm -hmm. because um, like one of my goals is is to to play a Marvel character, but yeah. um, that's that's one of those things where it's just something that I think will be will be cool, will be fun. So in terms of like characters I want to play, um, I'm not to play any character as long as he has just an interesting, interesting story and something I can um, I feel like I can portray it properly. Um, but like I, I, my proper goals are probably off camera. Like um, I have my own production company mm. that I obviously want to be out there a bit more. I want to have my own. Um, scripts that I've written commissioned or whatnot work of a company or like a Netflix or something and you know, like, you know what I'm trying to say it's more all my goals are more off camera to, to do stuff like writing, producing, directing, um in terms of acting, um whatever whatever comes, whatever you, you never know what's really out there. You might think there's a role that you didn't think existed and it can turn up the next day. So um there's always curveballs but yeah there, there's there's a lot of goals. I'm not quite sure what they are but I just know that um it's more away from acting. I want to establish myself um, behind the camera a little bit more in the future. Mm, definitely. Yeah. Um, so thank you so much, Taj. Before we go, I'm going to play a quick game of Would You Rather, okay? So I'm just okay. going to fire a quick three questions at you, okay? No problems. So, in your mind, they're, they're, they're odd questions. I'm going to I'll be honest with you. They're really oh, odd. <laughs> the odd better. The better. <laughs> okay, first question. Would you rather every shirt you wear be kind of cheap or only be able to use newspaper as toilet paper for the rest of your life? What was the first one? Be able to or be sure you wear itchy. Your, your, or your shirt, all of your shirts be kind of itchy for the rest of your life. Or only be able to wear, use newspaper but as, as toilet paper. <laughs> Either one isn't the best, to be fair. Uh, That's why it's would you rather. Probably, probably newspaper for toilet paper because, um, well, I don't know about everyone else, but usually when I use my toilet paper, it's in the privacy of my own home. So even if I am struggling, no one will be able to see. But if I'm not in yeah. public and my shirt's itchy, people might be able to tell that I'm it. Like, yeah, I might deflect yeah. people with, with itching and stuff. So yeah, toilet paper because I can just I can keep that to myself in in, yeah. in, in, my, in my own bubble. Cool. And next question. Would you rather have edible sorry, would you rather have edible spaghetti hair that regrows every night? Or would you rather have sweat that was maple syrup? Sweat that was what? Maple syrup? Salty maple syrup. So you sweat maple syrup comes out in your glands. Sweat. No, I'm gonna say the spaghetti. That just sounds horrible. The the the, the maple syrup sweat. That should, no, the spaghetti. The spaghetti one sounds kind of cool. The maple syrup just sounds kind of disgusting. <laughs> so, because you could be at you know sleeping in bed, you feel a little bit hungry, and you obviously yeah. just grab your hair. And it will you know, go back like, and you can style it and all that. But just sweat. No, that's horrible. <laughs> okay, and your last question: Would you rather be compelled to high five everyone you meet, or would you rather be compelled? To give a wedgie to anyone in a green shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna say. I'm gonna say the wedgie. Oh the, wow! Honestly, because that just anyone in a green shirt. Because it's not like I'm just doing it to anybody. It's anyone in a green shirt, and I don't even like the color green that much. So I feel like I'm doing it for a reason. <laughs> but even high five. I usually say hello to people anyway randomly on the streets. So even high five. I feel like it's in my character, but to wear you anyone with a green shirt is just weird. Yeah, I'm picking that one. In, yeah. Taj, can I say it's been an absolute pleasure to interview you today. Thank you, thank you. We've got to know you a bit better. Oh, and, yeah. you know, it's definitely. Been fabulous. Thank, thank you very you much. Appreciate you. Have a great evening. You too, you too, you too. Have a good thank weekend. You.
Thank you. And I also remember that if you have missed this interview, you've just joined, you can catch our interview on our Instagram page or, or you can also go to our YouTube page as well. Have a fantastic evening and I'll catch you next time. Bye.